Gotta believe me. It's on into July, and we still got squash. I reckon that means we beat the squash bug. Well, I try at it every year. I grow a garden. And I've uh, come to some conclusions about it and have some ideas I'd like to share to help y'all decide what you want to do about squash bugs. The main thing is to make a plan. Squash bugs have generations and they hibernate over the winter. So, if the, the few that made it through the winter get active again and you catch them before they can reproduce, well, you're well ahead of the game. And they don't all do it at the same time, but if you can stay ahead of them, patrol under leaves for eggs, have a pesticide program, and other things, then you can have a, what do they call that, holistic, holistic strategy for squash bugs and control them. You'll never beat them, but you can control them. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm mostly going to be talking about pesticides. And some people don't like to spray pesticides. And I think in the long run that you uh, run the risk of spraying too much pesticide. You can try not to because you'll get overrun with squash bugs and then you'll pour the chemicals to them and it's too late. And then you put so much chemicals on your food, you just don't want to eat it. It's a lot better just to put a, the recommended amount at the recommended time. And overall, I think you'll use less. And you certainly won't be helping the squash bugs out any and making the problem worse. If you're thinking you're going to use chemicals, you might decide you want to use organic. Well, that sounds good. The thing about organic chemicals versus synthetic chemicals is the synthetic chemicals mostly are made <coughs> to mimic the organics. The organics was derived from a plant, and the uh, synthetic was made in a test tube to be just like the one that was derived from the plant, and then has some agents to help it perform more effectively and requiring less of it so on average i say if you use organics you're going to use more and it's about the same thing so that's why i use synthetics but for the purposes of this talk i just if i'm talking about synthetic you've got a organic that'll be the same just use that uh malathion you don't as far as i know but i believe if you if you combined uh a pyrethroid a pyrethrum with neem oil, it would have a similar effect. You just have to use more of it and more often. So, the idea of having a squash bug, well, now's the time to talk about the buckwheat. Wasn't planning on it, but we've attracted a beneficial insect. Well, I don't know where he went. He was there, I swear. Moved on. I'll get back to the buckwheat in a minute. So where was it? Strategy. That's what the video is about. You need to develop an idea of when the pests are going to emerge. Squash bugs, I would say, here are going to be early May. Uh, and then you would deal with them through June, depending upon how successful you are. If it's mid-July like it is here, you've probably been wiped out. Uh, if you get overrun with them, the best thing for you, you can do for the long run is just to pull the plant, put it in a plastic bag, and get it out of your yard. But let's say you timed it right. You've got some experience, and you know about when they're going to hit. <clears throat> so before that, the beginning of your strategy, you started with a dust. Uh, this rope nung dust is very good if you can get your hands on it. So, uh, I'm not sure everybody can get it anymore. You kind of have to go back channels because if it's still available on the market, it's probably been, probably been limited to professionals. The reason being is people overuse dust in ways that harm bees. And my squash bug strategy, I don't use it after the plants bloom. As soon as the plants come up, put the rope known dust on and use it until they bloom. When it blooms, stop using it because the dust will kill bees and bees are clearly our friends, so to speak. Then you want to switch to spray insecticide. The biggest tool in my arsenal for squash bugs is malathion. 
a myothion has been overused and in, has become less effective and you are limited to two uses that is the recommended number of uses per year so you want to schedule those when the squash bugs arrive and make those two applications count I would use it once use uh, a different one on schedule and then make my third application of insecticide malathion spreading it out that way for me gets me into June and at that point I'm on borrowed time and have probably knocked the squash bugs back well enough that I'm going to be able to control them with other insecticides those being permethrin, pyrethrin, cyclo, blah, 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 stuff I can't pronounce. But something like a, a garden permethrin, you can use eight times. And squash usually doesn't last much longer than that because squash bugs aren't the only pest. That's just what we're confining ourselves to today. Now, you develop a strategy, you have a schedule for your insecticides, you know about how long they're going to last. What else can you do? Well, you need to patrol in person and remove eggs if you find them. Kill any squash bugs you can. Those things, they'll just hide away somewhere. You'll find them in the winter. Um, you can use a crap, uh, a crap, you can use a trap crop, not a crap top. Uh, something like that is a, is a plant that is very attractive, more attractive to the, squa the squash bugs than the crop you're trying to grow. I don't know anything that's really more attractive than yellow squash. They say Hubbard squash are. I don't know. I don't grow Hubbard squash because they're too attractive to squash bugs. Or you can use the crop that you're growing. Just pick one plant, keep the blooms off of it, and soak it with insecticide at a heavier concentration than you want anywhere near your food. Keep that plant away from the plants that you're taking food from and just soak it in insecticide and definitely keep the blooms off of it and what will happen is that the squash bugs won't be bothered there they'll try to reproduce there and they will die so we've got our insecticide schedule we've got a trap plant present what else can we do well look we Buckwheat is very beneficial in your garden. You may notice that the soil here is not red. Uh, this is red clay soil. Normally, in its natural state, it's red like a brick. And it's about as useful for growing anything. Uh, but if you turn in organic matter, you can improve it, which is what I've done here. My main tool there, well, half of my main tool, is green manure in the form of buckwheat. Buckwheat will also attract beneficial insects, which today are hard to come by. Later, when it blooms better, this uh, will be covered. Now, you have beneficial insects that will lay eggs on the squash bugs, and when those eggs hatch, they will eat the squash bugs. And that's something you don't get to do when the squash bugs aren't present on your crop. This is very beneficial. It will reduce the number of squash bugs that are available to come out and attack you next year. And I have found that since I started growing buckwheat, among other things, I've had much fewer squash bugs. I highly recommend it. It's also very good for bees. You'll grow it past the time you would normally grow a crop. And it will continue to benefit the bees even after you have stopped gardening for the summer, if you do stop. One tip about buckwheat, if you don't want it to grow again, you turn it under before it makes seed. If you allow it to make seed, which is good because it helps it fix phosphorus into the soil, uh, then it'll just make another crop, which is okay. Uh, if, you, if you get in a situation where you forgot about it, got busy, then go ahead and plant something back in that spot that will benefit from having a lot of buckwheat like watermelon because it will shade the watermelon and they won't get sunburnt so quickly. Uh, that's the problem we have here is our watermelons will get sunburnt and rot before we get to eating. Well that's the squash bug strategy video including trap crops, buckwheat, and an insecticide schedule. Now 
I'm on end of July here. Um, I'm real pleased with the fact that I still got squash growing. Um, we can still eat it every day if we wanted to. And would you believe I'm still not sick of it?